Hi, hello. I am Shego Adiroba. It feels so good as always to come into your space to be a blessing to you and to help you move your life forward in the direction that God wants it to go. <clears throat> now, um, <clears throat> yesterday we began a series on um, how to start all over again. And I remember saying that the issue of starting all over again will not apply to someone who doesn't have a struggle with feeling that they have lived a failed life. And you know, there are, there are people all over the world, there are people in our everyday life who will see um, in our eyes as far as we are concerned, these people are living the best of life. But when, when we uncover the, the, their life and when they are faced with certain realities, as far as they are concerned, they have not lived the life that they really want to live. Some years ago, I posted an article online of a, a, one of the top rich people in the world. I can't remember his name right now, but he lived in America at the time. And he committed suicide. And it was not going to be the first of it was not going to be the first in that category that we have heard um, of rich people who are taking their lives for no just cost. For whatever reason they did that, I don't know, but they had all the money in the world. They had they had enough money to buy them anything that can be bought with money. But still there was no inner satisfaction. Now, before it gets too late, <clears throat> before it gets to a point whereby you just chasing shadows and not, uh, not living the real life that you should live, before it gets to that point where you have acquired everything that a man can acquire in life and uh, it's still it's like John Maxwell explains on some of his teachings about success ensuring that your success or your success drive is is leaning on the right foundation because if it's not you only find that you have a ladder and then you've climbed to the height but you realize that you were going on the wrong height yes you were advancing yes you were making progress as far as you and the world was concerned but in the ultimate end you realize that oh I could have done better with my life. Now, one of the one of the most devastating things that can happen to a man is that feeling that I could have done better. Is that feeling that oh can 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 my life really come back together again? One of the, one of such feelings like um, I've drifted so far. I I I don't ever think. I can still come back on track. In saying that, I I need to establish the fact that let me tell the story of the prodigal son, just to lay a foundation that no matter how far you've drifted, no matter how far you've gone, there is still hope for you. <clears throat> so <clears throat> some time ago. I was driving and at the time I got loads of things on my mind I I couldn't really concentrate so I just came out of a meeting and that meeting put me under so much pressure of of demand and I was <clears throat> I was wondering if I would be able to meet up with that demand so it got me really really you know I got really I don't know I don't know how, how I don't know the kind of words I would use to express it but I got really intense like got under came under intense pressure and I was I was driving then something happened to me I got knocked out I didn't pass out I just got I just kind of disconnected from the environment for that for a time but I was still driving and I I wasn't eating any car there was no accident but I was still driving I was still conscious of my environment but 
somewhere somehow I wasn't there I, I can't explain how that happened you might <laughs> you might be able to explain it but I, I can't man. and after a while I just thought to myself and I'm like oh my god how did I get here then I, I paused and then quickly I, I found a way to get back on track and I'm glad I did not drive too far before I realized that I was going on the wrong course. Now, imagine that everyone who sees me believes, oh, he's driving, he's moving, he's making progress. But me and God, I'm not making progress. I'm just driving. There are some part of there are some part of Nigeria, like uh, I think this is common when you travel to Abuja from Lagos. There's a part of that road, I'm not, I can't remember right now, but I experienced it once. We, I just realized, and every other person, in the, it was a commercial vehicle at that time, that was this was several years back, that the driver was just going round, you know, he was just going round, and then realized that, come, he's moving but not making progress. So we called his attention to it, you know, and then there was, there was just a, a spot where he ought to turn. And each time he missed that turn, he keeps going round. It is very devastating a thing to lose track of your life and you are still living, and you are still um, you are still living, but in actual sense, you are not making progress. You are just existing. Let's go back to the story of the prodigal son. He woke up one day and said to his father, "I." can no longer live with you give me a share of my estate and you know what I'm good to go and he went the Bible records that he came uh, he got himself under very riotous kind of living <laughs> he was he was he was living large like he was living very large and everyone who, who saw him at that point will celebrate him like wow this is the biggest celebrity in town you know cruising the biggest ride you know sleeping from one hotel to the other he was having the fun of his life but you know what he was on a wrong mission he had missed it he had missed it i i, I keep asking myself if the if the father knew that it was right for his inheritance would he have denied him of course he wouldn't have but he was so impatient and impatient and by virtue of his impatience he got drifted he missed it he missed the mark so when he was supposed to still be at home he was spending money lavishly the inheritance that would have taken him for a lifetime he spent in a short while because of impatience so Impatience for him was the point where he missed it. How many people in our world today become so impatient with life, become so impatient with their family that they feel that you know become so impatient they just want they just want results fast fast and because of that speedy speedy desire for result, not minding how it comes, whether righteous or unrighteous, they get themselves into all manner of trap that 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 distract them. From the path of life that they were following i'm sure you're following me now for some people it's comparison some years back i was i i almost drifted because for some reason i almost began to compare myself with someone and you know <clears throat> it was someone i had met way back and then few years later I, I came into I came in and I see some of the things that he's doing and they look really good to me and I'm like wow I should try and do something like that but God God intervened in my in my case in that I was able to understand that this thing I want to do or these thoughts I'm nursing in my heart is not burned by the desire to um, to do something burned from within but something that was burned from trying to compare myself <clears throat> and then one day in that same period <clears throat> uh, i closed my eyes and the lord showed me a picture in a flash and then i saw 
I saw a point where two people met and then before you knew what was happening the, the, the point now split it and the Lord showed me that the point where we met was the point where um, our purpose in life went separate ways so while he was doing what he was doing what I was doing might not be as appealing in quote but what he was doing might be more appealing in a way and the Lord showed me the wisdom of not trying to compare myself and changing my style just to get more uh, more more rich in a way so I, I just adjusted myself and the Lord saved me from that, from that. how many people have have lost track of their life because they were comparing themselves how many young people are trapped in scenes of uh, pornography scenes of how many how many young people are trapped in smoking in all manner of uh, vices that are unhealthy to them because someone compared them to someone he said look at your mate they are doing that look at this person look at that person and before you say Jack, they miss they miss the pack. Because for every young man that missed the mark, their life was their life never started like that. Because growing up as a child, you, you just wanted to do what is right. By training, you just wanted to do what is right. But there is always a point where you miss the mark and you begin to deviate from the whole land, from the ancient landmark, as the Bible calls it. Why do people miss the mark? Several reasons. I've just said two. One is impatient, and while the other is trying to compare yourself. What do you do when you when you miss a major mark in your life? Like the prodigal son, he had enough reasoning. He didn't have to pray and fast. Even if he did, it would have been good. But he thought to himself that, come to think of it. Even the even the the lowest servant in my father's house will not be exposed to the kind of life that I am exposed to. So he went back home. The very first place to begin when you drift is to go back to God and be willing to surrender all your regrets, all your pain all your frustrations whatever reason why you thought you drifted away in the first place you must be willing to say god i surrender all of and it's very simple because i meet people who say to me that i've gone so far i don't ever think i can get it right and Let's go for a short break. Um, I'll be right back.